Dr. King was born in Atlanta on January 15, 1929, down on Auburn Avenue. Uh, and Dr. King grew up in a household uh, with his parents, uh, Martin Luther King Sr. and his mother, uh, but also his grandparents, the Reverend A.D. Williams uh, and his wife. Now the Reverend Williams had become the pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church on Auburn Avenue. Uh, and that becomes the family church. Uh, so it's the church in which Marty King uh, grows up and is raised. Uh, now Dr. King himself uh, is educated in the public schools of Atlanta. Uh, he goes off to Booker T. Washington High School here in Atlanta before uh, getting to matriculate at Morehouse College, which is where his father uh, had gone to school. Uh, after Morehouse College, Marty King decides to go off to seminary, uh, and he attends Crozier Theological uh, Seminary up in Pennsylvania. After Crozier, he goes to Boston University. In Boston, he meets a very attractive young woman. Her name is Coretta Scott. They get married and they debate what to do. Coretta Scott King was not interested in returning to the South. Martin King was, so he interviews at several churches and is tendered an offer at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery. They have a child, uh, and then the bus boycott occurs. Segregation in public transportation will pass away, and I think we should start now preparing for the inevitable. King is recruited to be the head of the Montgomery Improvement Association. He takes on that responsibility after much prayer and uh, thought. Now, in Montgomery, the effort to organize for the protest uh, results in uh, success with the bus boycott's conclusion in 1956, but also the desire uh, to keep the, the protest going. So in 1957, uh, the pastors at, uh, involved in the Montgomery Improvement Association, by this point Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the Reverend Ralph D. Abernathy, the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, these figures joined by others will organize what's called the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The SCLC uh, will be organized with the purpose of taking this protest regionally and leading civil rights reform in America. In February of 1960, uh, Martin Luther King and his family moved to Atlanta. King accepted the co-pastorate of Ebenezer Baptist Church under his father, and the family moved into a house on Boulevard. Now King would then go on from his position at Ebenezer Baptist Church to lead the civil rights movement. In August of 1963, civil rights leaders gathered in Washington, D.C. A. Philip Randolph had proposed what was called a march on Washington for jobs. And the point was for black people to come to Washington and insist that they be given equal access for employment. Thousands came. And it was a peaceful demonstration, occupying the nation's capital uh, for a day, uh, to listen to speeches being delivered uh, from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall. Uh, and among those speaking were Fred Shuttlesworth, John Lewis, uh, who was the chairman of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. But the person who stole the limelight, of course, was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., whose I Have a Dream speech captured better than anyone ever had before the goals and aspirations, not just of black people, but of everybody. Of freedom and justice, I have a dream. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Do you have any business in the courthouse? The only business we have was to come back to the Board of Registrars to register. The Board of Registrars is not in session this afternoon, as you informed. 
came down to make a mockery out of this courthouse who he's not going to have. After the Civil Rights Act and the March on Washington, attention turned to the voting rights and the denial by white uh, governments to register black voters. But the climax occurs in Selma, Alabama, where in the middle of Alabama's Black Belt in the old plantation district, black people had been denied access to the ballot. And uh, Dr. King and SCLC will support the demonstrations there. So coming in to work with SNCC in Dallas County, Alabama, SCLC will organize protests around the county government that was refusing to register black voters. This culminates in what's called uh, the Selma Campaign of March of 1965. Now, Dr. King is not there on Bloody Sunday when John Lewis and Hosea Williams lead a march out of Brown's Chapel AME Church across the Edmund Pettus Bridge and are beaten by Alabama state troopers. All of it captured on film, all of it broadcast around the nation and the world, all of it uh, leading to a Selma to Montgomery march that Dr. King did lead. And indeed, uh, President Johnson did propose and the Congress did pass that voting rights legislation. King comes back to Atlanta, meets with his advisors in SCLC, and he says, we've got to organize the poor of our country and promote human rights. And he sets forth an agenda for what's called the Poor People's Campaign. King came back to the notion of occupying the nation's capital, encouraging the poor people from across America to come to Washington, D.C., and to remain there until the system opened up and addressed their needs and their concerns. This wasn't for black people only. This was for white people, for Native Americans, for Asians, for everybody. And he encouraged them all to come. So it fit when in Memphis, Tennessee, black men who uh, were working as garbage men, cleaning the streets, when they went on strike to demand a living wage. Now, Memphis, Tennessee, and next to the Mississippi Delta, the big plantation area, the agricultural south, was full of poor people who were unemployed and needing work. And so in Memphis, uh, the city leaders didn't pay workers very much money because there was always somebody out there who would do the job for less. And those garbage men went on strike and their motto was, I am a man, and they stood up to say, we deserve a living wage. They asked King to come support them. How could he not? Living wages for working people? It fit the objectives of the Poor People Campaign. And so he goes. And it's there in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th, an assassin shoots him down on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel, bringing to an end his life, but not his legacy. That Poor People's Campaign was held in Washington, D.C. The Reverend Ralph D. Abernathy assumed the presidency of the SCLC, and within weeks of Dr. King's murder, his widow, Coretta Scott King, would begin promoting the idea of a Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change, which might forever teach the values of that Kingian nonviolence that he promoted. So his legacy continues. It continues in the King holiday we have every January. It continues in the drive for human rights, in the building of civil rights memorials at all of these venues where the demonstrations took place. And so that legacy is still with us today a legacy of advocating for equality, for economic justice, for international peace, and for human rights. <laughs>